No. Nah. <sighs> <sighs> oh, I can't kick anymore, y'all. I gotta take a break. Let's go with this thing in the morning. Okay, everybody, big progress on the 1942 Harley Davidson FLTT. When you guys caught up with us last time, we were disassembling the motor and getting that first look at what is inside one of the rarest and actually the biggest displacement Harley Davidson racing engine of the era. 80 cubic inches. Uh, overhead valve, it's that famous knucklehead engine, racing setup, so specially prepared with this front mount magneto, actually chain driven as we dug into this thing, we got to actually see what kind of tricks they were pulling way back in the 1940s. The thing was absolutely decked out, super cool, cut back, lightened up cam and gears. Like I said, the chain drive magneto carburetor was all modified, big huge valves in the head, so the intake valves were right up around two inches, uh, intake valve, that's a quarter inch larger than a standard uh, intake valve. Cut down pistons and special oil rings, polished rods. The stroke was 80 cubic inch stroke, three and seven sixteenths FL bore. So 74 cubic inch bore, that's a three and a half, uh, three and seven sixteenths. The stroke was the flathead 80 stroke. They actually used a pair of UL flathead flywheels. I think that's four and nine thirty seconds. So just over four and a quarter inches. Compression ratio, we don't really know because these motors were not standard motors. Uh, I suppose we could have uh, CC'd the heads and done all the math to figure it out, but we wanna get this thing going again. So we're not wasting any time, guys. So a lot of projects in here at the museum. We've been on stall on a lot of things, waiting for plating, finishing up motors, waiting for paint work. So last week we rolled in this new project and we knew it was gonna be the first one to get done. So today, big day, we get to actually take this thing uh, from how it is now to pretty much a finished motorcycle and hopefully by the end of what you're watching, you're gonna see this thing fire up for the first time, guys. So we're gonna get back to work and take you guys through the finish up process of a 1942 Harley Davidson FLTT. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, guys, is get this drive line hooked up. When we got this bike, it was about 70% complete, 80% complete. Uh, drive line wasn't even uh, installed or was disassembled from the bike. So we're gonna get this thing back going again. I actually rebuilt the transmission in between when you guys saw us take apart the motor uh, and and uh, this this point right now. So full transmission rebuild, the gears look beautiful, some new bearings, uh, new shifter forks, uh, new main shaft. Other than that, the transmission slapped right back together. So right now we're gonna dial this clutch in. I'm using a new clutch hub, uh, high wear item. So what we're gonna do is uh, set up the drive line and get this ultra cool 1940s racing primary cover. It's all drilled out, get that installed. Uh, and we'll have this thing kicking over in no time. And this is the chatter plate. Okay. Okay. All right. Baskets installed with the heavy duty bearings. Uh, Seven plate clutch. Okay. Fiber, steel. Fiber, steel, fiber. That's your feather action. Then this bad boy, I'm gonna go ahead and blast. Okay, some beefy clutch springs for that heavy duty race motor. And it goes on one way. No tools necessary other than a 916 wrench and a big fat washer fine th and a fine threaded uh, 3 8 bolt to install a Harley Davidson clutch. So no spring compressor or anything like that. You use that big washer and the 3 8 fine threaded bolt to compress the springs. You put your lock nuts on. And once you do that, that uh, 
3 8 bolt in the center there will come right out. So there's a cork seal that runs around the outside of this primary cover. This one's got the original in there, but it was broken in a few places. We've got the primary chain oiler set up to oil, so we're gonna go ahead and replace this cork with a fresh one. Uh, and uh, seal up this primary cover. <laughs> At least it won't leak out the bottom though. That's what we're going for. Oh God, I've been waiting years to use this. I actually bought this primary cover at a swap meet probably when I was 25 years old. I bet I've had it every bit of 15 years. And it's like it's been waiting for this bike, guys. Okay, couple of oil lines. vent line hooked up, original oil lines, and we've cleaned them out already. I've hosed them out. Uh, inside's clean. We did our best to leave the outside as found to match up with the rest of the bike, guys. So it's the thing about having uh, a bike 70% complete. Inevitably, you gotta dig up a few extra pieces and uh, we're doing our best to make sure the pieces that we do pull from the shop run right with the look and the feel of the bike. Okay, just a few more things to do. We got to tighten up some intake manifold nuts. We got our gas tanks to mount, hook the fuel line up. We've already plumbed in a new shut off and uh, bolt those pipes on and we ought to be in business. Ultra cool 19 30s or 1947 I should say scallop paint job now I was mentioning before guys uh, we have a WR upstairs that's absolutely identical to this bike could have been sister bikes in the same pit way back then way back when uh, this bike of course is a TT bike didn't have a dirt track class for 80 cubic inches uh, but they did have the 80 class for the TT bikes so we're gonna get this thing bolted on. New fuel shut off. Uh, we're running rubber line underneath. Uh, race bike. We don't need the hard lines. We got the rubber lines. So, yeah, I like that. Okay, guys. As you can see, we already got the new tab welded on uh, the lower end. This thing had been broken off for years and years. Easy fix. And the tank now mounts like it was always on there. Good. We got pipes, plug wires, and I think that's it. I think that's about it. So pipes, really cool setup. We went with a high pipe in front. We're going with a uh, drop low in back. We'll plug the low one in first there. Cool old fit, made out of some original stuff. And uh, we're gonna go with it. Ugh. What a fit this is, oh, really cool. So this one mounts in front and in back. What we've got here is a little quarter 24 uh, bolt up front in the relay boss. Gotta keep that pipe in the head somehow. Get in there. There we are, 7 16 hex head. And then here in the back, set up there for the, oh yeah, real nice. Plug wires, fluids, bingo. All right, I wanna stretch that guy up over the top there. Wow, all right. Take it. Okay. Get this bad boy fired up. Okay. We'll go in the left side tank. It's a new Matt Olson fuel shut off. We use them on all the bikes because it's got that, you know, new 
modern seal, all fresh components. Let's see, about a gallon and a half, we'll say. We need a, something to tap on that float bowl a little bit, clear line so you can see it filling. I think we'll be set fresh, fresh rebuild on the float bolt. Something to choke it with. Ready? Let's do it. What's it gonna sound like? High compression, 80 cubic inch, knucklehead engine, specially built for TT racing. Okay. Got a lot of compression. Dude. Get in here. Let's see if we're getting spark. Yep. Okay, it's gonna fire right up. Nah. <sighs> Uh, I can't kick anymore, y'all. I got to take a break. Let's go with this thing in the morning. cow we got to try that again i think the low speed needle was in too far i kicked that thing 150,000 times yesterday and about the only change we made i mean i put a kill switch on it today we checked the plug wires i didn't pull the plugs again fuel delivery seemed fine oh my gosh sometimes it's the littlest errors now i can make excuses because this carburetor is different than a standard carburetor um well come on she tough it's not an easy starter any way you look at it cow as noisy as that thing is the motor's super quiet the pipes sound killer they got them wrtt race pipes uh, or uh, like a, a 45 wr pipe we went with duels gotta go high on the front pipe because you got that front mount mag oh my god as hard as i kicked yesterday and we don't like kicking them a lot usually tells you something's wrong in this instance you know you get in a hurry and we jammed this thing together in pretty short order. You know, we had the motor apart last week, put it back together, came back, got the motor dropped in and started buttoning all the stuff up like you guys watched us go through. Um, and then when the clock was ticking, we're sitting there looking, we gotta get this done, we gotta get it done. One small issue, low speed needle was in too far. Now, so you guys can see exactly what was going on here, so. Standard Harley 
carburetor of the type, right? What you got is a choke plate here, okay? Choke plate. Uh, the choke plate itself, when you actuate the choke rod, which is the chokes over here on a motorcycle, uh, underneath the gas tank, you flip this rod and you guys can see how open here, so when you flip the choke on, it actually raises and pulls that low speed needle out of the carb body way down here, gives it a richer mixture, and then you close it and it comes to a pre-setting there. Well, that one doesn't even have a choke plate, meaning it doesn't have the cam. So this here was just set where it had to be set or where I guessed it would be set. So pull that thing out a little bit more. Oh, that's why it wasn't getting gas. That's why it wasn't getting gas. So man, this thing makes some incredible noise. Racing stuff at its finest from the 1940s, guys. They don't make them like this anymore. They hardly made them like this in the first place. So one of just a handful uh, of these bikes that are known, 80 cubic inch, ultra high compression, worked over from the front to the back. Uh, and this thing is really, we did our very best to keep this as faithful uh, of a racer as we possibly could, almost as original as a bike like this could be down to the gas caps, the grips, the shifter levers, the throttle cables, um, this is what we live for, guys. Harley Davidson, an American race in history. Doesn't get any cooler if you ask me. This thing is warmed up and probably ready for a ride. So we're gonna get this thing out, roast a couple burnouts up and down the lot. And uh, this one's going on display right here at Wheels Through Time Museum. So make sure you come check it out. Actually, this weekend is our anniversary weekend. It's coming up 21 years right here in Maggie Valley, North Carolina. We're starting our fire suppression fundraiser back up to this day, guys. So far, uh, we've raised over $100,000 uh, on our way to 300,000. So thank you guys for all that you contributed so far. If you can, check out wheelsthroughtime.com. Make a contribution today and help us get this thing, uh, this building as safe as we can possibly make it. Check out our raffle. That's one of the things that keeps us going is our annual raffle. Uh, without it, we wouldn't be bringing this stuff right to you guys today. So thanks for tuning in. You guys want to hear it run again? I think it's going to start on one kick. We'll see.